Chenab Rail Bridge is the highest rail bridge ever built, soaring an astonishing 359 meters above the turbulent Chenab River in Kashmir, India. To give you some perspective, that's a dizzying 35 meters taller than the Eiffel Tower. Spanning 1,315 meters, this steel and concrete giant defies gravity with an extraordinary main arch of 467 meters, the longest steel railway arch ever engineered. Built amidst the treacherous Himalayan terrain, it had to withstand earthquakes as severe as magnitude 8.0, extreme temperatures plunging to minus 20 degrees Celsius, and fierce winds exceeding 266 kilometers per hour. But how did engineers build such a towering masterpiece in one of Earth's most challenging landscapes? Kashmir a land of breathtaking beauty, yet historically isolated. Harsh winters frequently cut off the region, blocking roadways under meters of snow, isolating millions of residents for days or even weeks. Before this ambitious project, the only connection to the rest of India was through precarious mountain roads prone to landslides. Statistically, every winter, these roads would remain blocked for an average of 40 days. This meant food supplies, medical aid, and essential commodities were often delayed, severely impacting daily life. And if that wasn't tough enough, Kashmir faced tremendous economic setbacks, with limited trade opportunities due to unreliable infrastructure. The idea of a reliable rail connection was crucial not just economically, but strategically. The government needed a permanent solution, one that would survive harsh winters, seismic activity, and challenging geological conditions. But building a rail line through the Himalayas? Easier said than done. To bridge this connectivity gap, the Indian government envisioned a bold rail link, the Udhampur Srinagar Baramula Rail Link, USBRL, officially declared a national project due to its strategic importance. The most daunting challenge? A massive gorge carved by the Chenab River, demanding a bridge capable of defying engineering logic. Though initially approved back in 2002, the project faced numerous delays due to safety concerns and funding issues. It wasn't until 2017 that construction truly began, following extensive geological surveys and meticulous planning. The goal was clear, construct the highest, longest spanning railway bridge ever with strict adherence to seismic and safety standards. In August 2022, after overcoming multiple delays and design challenges, the Chenab Bridge was finally completed at a staggering cost of $170 million US. The first trial runs commenced in June 2024, with full-scale operations expected in April 2025, finally bringing an all-weather railway connection to Kashmir. Building a bridge 359 meters above a deep Himalayan gorge is never just about connecting two points. It's about rewriting the rules of engineering. At the heart of the Chenab Rail Bridge is a massive steel arch stretching 467 meters across the Chenab River. That arch is the longest railway arch span in the world. But why an arch at all? In terrain like this, building tall piers would have been nearly impossible. The gorge is too deep, the slopes too steep, and the underlying rock too fragile. The arch, with its parabolic shape, allows weight to be pushed down and outward efficiently. That means fewer supports, less obstruction to the river below, and better load transfer across the gap. But making an arch work at this scale, especially at high altitude, on cracked dolomite rock in an earthquake-prone region is where the real story begins. The design team had to consider every natural threat, wind speeds up to 266 kilometers an hour, temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius, and earthquakes measuring up to magnitude 8.0. They built scale models of the bridge and ran wind tunnel tests to measure how gusts would ripple through the structure. 
From those tests, they calculated equivalent static wind loads, numbers that help shape everything from the steel ribs to the way expansion joints behave during high winds. Those ribs, each one is made from sealed steel boxes, prefabricated and filled with concrete to increase their stiffness and reduce vibration. This hybrid of steel and concrete enhances damping and ensures the structure stays firm when the wind howls or when the earth shakes, that the slope on each side of the gorge varied between 43 degrees and 77 degrees. Worse, the rock was mostly dolomite, a weak, porous stone riddled with invisible cracks. That meant no foundation could be placed directly without reinforcement. To stabilize these unstable slopes, engineers used three methods. Grouting. Cement was injected into the cracks inside the rock, turning a brittle surface into something more cohesive and solid. Anchor blocks. Long steel rods, called DYWIDAG tie rods, were drilled into the mountains. These rods were kept under high tension using hydraulic jacks and connected to heavy concrete blocks. The tension in the steel and pressure from the blocks pulled the slope inward, increasing its strength. Shotcrete. Special concrete was sprayed directly onto the rock surface. This layer hardened quickly, locking the outer rock layers in place and protecting against weather damage. Only after all this could the actual foundation be prepared. Concrete bases were poured in place to support the steel piers, some of which rose up to 133.7 meters high. Since no major roads reached this remote valley, engineers built four workshops right in the mountains, two on each side of the gorge. These became steel processing and painting hubs. All steel parts, totaling over 28,660 tons, were shipped in as steel plates cut and welded into 12-meter-long segments, and then coated with a special corrosion-resistant paint that could survive for 15 years in this harsh environment, more than double the average for other bridges in India. The big challenge was lifting and positioning these steel parts over the gorge. There wasn't a crane on earth that could do it, so the engineers created their own, a cable crane system, the longest ever built spanning 915 meters across the valley. It could carry loads up to 40 tons, gliding parts into position with surgical precision. Once the steel columns were in place, the deck sections, each 8 meters long, were launched forward. At the same time, arch segments were lifted using a derrick crane mounted on top of the deck. These arch pieces, weighing dozens of tons, were assembled cantilever style, one from each side, working toward the center. While the arch was under construction, cable stays attached to nearby piers kept it from collapsing under its own weight. Without these, the structure would have bent and fallen. Even the main piers were supported by cables connected to opposite piers, distributing forces and preventing deformation. Then came the big moment, arch closure. This is when the two sides of the arch finally meet in the middle. Engineers used hydraulic jacks to align the arch tips down to the millimeter, compensating for wind pressure, structural tension, and even temperature differences. After aligning the bottom and top cords of the arch, the final segments were bolted in place. Over 600,000 nuts and bolts were used in the arch assembly alone. Deck of the bridge Once isn't the just arch was welded completed the structure and self-supporting, the cables were removed. Engineers installed and the next spherical began, bearings building the piers that up the arch from ground to hold the rest of the deck. During an earthquake, the, the bottom half of the bearing moves with the ground, while the top half stays still, keeping the rail line protected. In addition, three major expansion joints divide the deck into four separate sections. These joints absorb shifts in temperature, seismic movement, and vibration. That's why the rail deck isn't frigidly fixed to the arch. It's a dynamic, flexible surface. The bridge also uses a ballastless track system, a key feature for modern high-speed rail. Instead of laying tracks on loose stone, ballast, engineers mounted them directly on reinforced concrete slabs, reducing vibration and dust, increasing safety, and cutting down maintenance costs. This system can handle train speeds up to 100 kilometers an hour, even in tough weather. 
Even if a section of the bridge sustains damage, say if a pier falls, the structure is designed with redundancy. The steel surfaces received a custom multi-layer paint system developed by Axo Noble, designed to withstand ultraviolet radiation, snow, rain, and intense temperature swings. It had to last longer, dry faster, and resist corrosion better than anything used before on Indian rail infrastructure. While the Chenab Rail Bridge symbolizes engineering triumph, it hasn't been without criticism. Environmentalists raised concerns about potential impacts on local wildlife and ecosystems during construction. The use of explosives for slope stabilization and rock excavation led to fears of destabilizing local geology. Despite thorough environmental assessments and safeguards, these concerns highlighted the delicate balance between development and preservation. Financially, the project's costs escalated significantly from initial estimates due to unforeseen geological complexities and delays. Critics argued the escalating costs were indicative of poor initial planning, but supporters countered that such ambitious infrastructure always comes with inherent risks and unforeseen challenges. Yet the benefits undeniably outweigh criticisms. Economically, the bridge opens Kashmir's economy to unprecedented opportunities, linking markets directly to the rest of India, facilitating tourism, trade, and investment. Strategically, it provides year-round reliable connectivity, significantly reducing isolation during harsh winters, thus transforming lives for millions. If you enjoyed exploring this groundbreaking achievement, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel for more engineering marvels. Comment below your thoughts and turn on notifications to never miss another incredible story.